Turn in your King James Bible to the book of Jeremiah, chapter 27. I want to talk to you today about God's satanic servants. What is this about? Well, it's about a God that uh, controls everything versus a God who controls uh, the good, but not the evil. The evil is some foreign army that the other God there, he, has to, he doesn't really have control. Uh, the God of the Bible controls everyone and everything. He gives free will, but he still is in control. Jeremiah chapter 27, beginning in verse 1. In the beginning of the reign of Jehoiakim, the son of Josiah, king of Judah, came this word unto Jeremiah from the Lord, saying, Thus saith the Lord to me, Make thee bonds and yokes, and put them upon thy neck, and send them to the king of Edom, and to the king of Moab, and to the king of the Ammonites, and to the king of Tyrus, and to the king of Zidon, by the hand of the messengers which came, come to Jerusalem unto Zedekiah king of Judah, and command them to say unto their masters, Thus saith the Lord of hosts, the God of Israel, Thus shall ye be, or shall ye say unto your masters, I have made the earth, the man and the beast that are upon the ground, my, by my great power and by my outstretched arm, and have given it unto whom it seemed meet unto me. And now have I given all these lands into the hand of Nebuchadnezzar the king of Babylon, my what? You're reading in your King James Bible? I hope so. My servant, Nebuchadnezzar, and God calls him my servant. The king of Babylon, I'm sorry, and the beasts of the field have I given him also to serve him. And all nations shall serve him and his son and his son's son until the very time of his land Come, and then many nations and great kings shall serve themselves of him. And it shall come to pass that the nation and kingdom, which will not serve the same Nebuchadnezzar, the king of Babylon, and that will not put their neck under the yoke of the king of Babylon, that nation will I punish, saith the Lord, with the sword and with the famine and with the pestilence, until I have consumed them by his hand. Therefore hearken not ye to your prophets, nor to your diviners, nor to your dreamers, nor to your enchanters, nor to your sorcerers, which speak unto you, saying, Ye shall not serve the king of Babylon. For they prophesy a lie unto you to remove you far from your land, and that I should drive you out, and ye shall perish. Perish, But the nations that bring their neck under the yoke of the king of Babylon and serve him, those will I let remain still in their own land, saith the Lord, and they shall till it and dwell therein. Let's pray. Dear Heavenly Father, I do pray again that you would please open your word to the viewers out there. Help me to preach it correctly. Help people to understand how much you are in control and that it will remove their fear of man and only put their fear on you, Lord. I do pray for that. And I pray that people would submit themselves to you and your word and not to some false teacher out there. And I ask it all in the name of our Lord and Savior, Jesus Christ. Amen. So what did we just read here in the text? Um, we read that God controlled Nebuchadnezzar, a pagan, heathen king. Now, what does that teach us? That teaches us about how God rules in the affairs of men. You see, the God of the Bible is powerful. He's all-powerful. He controls everything and everyone. And again, please understand. The philosophers will come along and they'll say, well, then if he controls everyone, then that means that he, you know, that basically controls them like they would be a robot. No. God gives them free will. God allows them to have the ability to choose. But he knows what they're going to do. He sees it and he says, okay, I'm going to give you this chance. I'm going to send my Holy Spirit to convict you of certain things. And when you don't, okay, then I'm going to move you in this direction or move you in that direction. But when somebody steps into a position of leadership and they come along and they say, I'm going to be the king or I'm going to be the president or I'm going to be the prime minister or whatever. Now they've stepped into a very unique situation where God will take control of them and make them do certain things. Let's look about that. Amos chapter 3. Go to the book of Amos. Turn towards the New Testament if you're newly saved. Amos chapter 3. You can pause the video and look it up if you want to. Let me break this branch so I can get it out of my face here. Amos chapter 3, verse 6 through 8. 
The Bible says here, Shall a trumpet be blown in the city, and the people not be afraid? Shall there be evil in a city, and the Lord hath not done it? Surely, surely the Lord God will do nothing, but he revealeth his secret unto his servants the prophets. The lion hath roared, who will not fear? The Lord God hath spoken, who can but prophesy? The Lord has spoken in his word. And I can read this and I can apply it to today as Bible prophecy that is being fulfilled. Now, it's interesting because I've actually heard from new virginists that can't handle who God is. And they'll actually say, the Bible, the King James Bible is falsely translated. Because in Amos chapter 3, verse 6, it says, Shall there be evil in a city and the Lord hath not done it? They, they're saying that God's done the evil. Isn't that terrible? The, the translators of the King James Bible, they were too stupid. They didn't understand the original, original Hebrew. And whatever so they it has to be a bad translation no you don't understand god you see when people do wrong when people sin before the lord unrepentant sin gets god's judgment god's punishment upon them that's what happens if god can't do any evil in the city if god can't punish people for their sin well what's he supposed to do god judges evil people by bringing evil upon them the fruit of their own ways, you see? All these morons that go out there, oh, we're going to walk into the store, man. We're going to steal what we can. We're going to fill up trash bags and we're going to, we're going to just go in and steal, just rob the whole store. Yeah, brilliant. Yeah, guess what, stupid? You just had the store shut down. You just cost them so much money that they're now saying, no more retail sales. You just destroyed your own neighborhood, brainiac. Hey, we're going to, we're going to go out there. I'm going to show my anger for something. I'm going to show them I'm going to burn my city down. Well, that's really smart, too. That's what these people do. God gives them the fruit of their own doings, you see. He brings evil upon this people because they've rejected him. See, you see, how do you know they've rejected him? Because the Bible says, thou shalt not steal. They steal. They've rejected God. They don't trust in God. They don't believe in God. They don't believe in judgment coming in the future. That's why they're going out and doing all these evil things. Very simple to figure this stuff out. But the new version is they come along and their God is not a, he's not a mean God. He wouldn't bring evil upon a city. He wouldn't do evil like that. He just doesn't, he has unconditional love. He's always just up there as a, as a fuzzy teddy bear waiting for a hug. <laughs> no, it doesn't work that way. God can bring incredible evil on a nation that's unrepentant. And he will, and he does. And he can do it through their leaders. Romans chapter 13. The Illuminati has set up their people. They are controlling everything. Oh, it's terrible. We need to join together to fight the forces of the New World Order. We need to stop the evil. We... Uh, no, actually, if you study it out, God's bringing the nations together to gather the kingdoms so that he can pour upon them his wrath and everything, you know, judgment. Um. The Illuminati doesn't exist apart from God knowing what they're doing. Uh, they don't go into their Bilderberger meeting and God's up there going, having, what are they saying? What, did Michael, Archangel, could you, could you get down there and kind of spy? I tried to, but the security guards kicked me out. Ah, can we get a guy on the inside? Of, maybe we could get it, pay off one of them, you know, after. The eyes of the Lord are in every place beholding the evil and the good. <laughs> okay, the day when God shall judge the secrets of men by Jesus Christ. Um, the Lord knows exactly what they're saying. But Christians get so afraid. Oh no, what are they doing? Oh. Romans 13. Let every soul be subject unto the higher powers. For there is no power but of God. The powers that be are ordained of God. Paul's. Adolf Hitler. Did God put him into his position of power? Yes. How about uh, Mao Zedong? Mm -hmm. How about Joseph Stalin, Vladimir Lenin, um, Vladimir Putin, uh, Zelensky, whatever the guy's first name is, don't really care. Uh, you ready? What about Joe Biden? Does America deserve Joe Biden and Kamala, <laughs> Kamala Harris? Uh, does uh, America deserve them? 
Oh, well, well, uh, brother, yeah, yeah, well, uh, every evil leader down through the centuries, every pope, Verse 2, Whosoever therefore resisteth the power resisteth the ordinance of God, and they that resist shall receive to themselves damnation. Kind of funny it's because it's exactly what the Lord said about Nebuchadnezzar. I'm going to put this yoke upon your neck. You're going to serve Nebuchadnezzar, my servant, and if you don't, I'm going to come after you. You'll answer to me for it, says God. <coughs> for rulers are not a terror to good works, but to the evil. Wilt thou then not be afraid of the power? Do that which is good, and thou shalt have praise of the same. See, it's not just blind submission to a ruler, like some of the hirelings out there teach, because they're running government corporation buildings with the military fringe flag, you know, gold uh, fringe around the American flag, a military ensign, and they're 501c3 under IRS code so that they're tax exempt, and they have to watch what they say. They can't you know, do anything to affect public policy. All true. You can look it up. These guys will tell you it's just, you know, complete submission to the government, whatever the government does. Uh, no, what the Bible is saying here is God puts them in power, right? But those rulers, they're not supposed to be a terror to good works. And when you get right down to it, they're not. You say, oh, but brother, what about during the pandemic? What about that? Can we talk about that? Yes, we can. Well, there were some things that were terror to good works, weren't there? Uh, well, no, not really. I saw a lot of terror to the bad. I saw a bar not far from here that got shut down. A lot of bars got shut down. That was good. Oh, but it took away, it took away freedom and, and liberty and things. Yeah, it did. But it took away the freedom and liberty of people that were evil. Don't forget that. Verse 4. For he is the minister of God to thee for good. But if thou do that which is evil, be afraid, for he beareth not the sword in vain. For he is the minister of God, a revenger to execute wrath upon him that doeth evil. Wherefore ye must needs be subject, not only for wrath, but also for conscience' sake. For for this cause pay ye tribute also, for they are God's ministers, attending continually upon this very thing. Render therefore to all their dues, tribute to whom tribute is due, custom to whom custom, fear to whom fear, honor to whom honor." You're supposed to pay taxes. You're supposed to submit yourself to what the government is doing when it's in line with the Word of God. Okay, obviously if you have some bad guy come along and whatever and start telling you to do something that is against the Scriptures, truly against the Scriptures, okay, let me say it that way, um, there are certain things that people think that they have a right to and they don't really have a right to. But if you do things that are in line with the Scriptures, you'll have praise of the same. I've, been, I've had multiple confrontations with police officers um, since I've been in ministry. And you know how many times I've actually been arrested or charged with anything? Zero. Zero. And I actually told a police officer the one time. Um, I said, you know, I said, you're a, men a minister. I'm a minister of Jesus Christ. You're a minister of the law. And he kind of looked at me weird. He said, oh, okay. And I said, yeah. I said, Romans chapter 13 talks about it. I said, you're out here to do your job to, to enforce the law and whatever else, and I have absolute respect for that. I'm out here to enforce the spiritual laws, and the spiritual laws line up with the physical laws. See, these people are disturbing the peace. They're using a worldly means, a wicked way of offending people and whatever else with their loud rock music. It shouldn't be that way. Their ordinance is against this type of a thing. And he said, well, yeah, I would agree, but they have a permit. And I said, and I, later I found out they didn't have a permit. They lied to him. But the whole point is there should be agreement there. Oh, Brother Brian, there's wicked police officers out there. Oh, yeah, there's wicked politicians too. But you know what? If they're in those positions, they can be brought in line with the Word of God, with the Scriptures. I don't care how wicked they are. But sometimes Christians get away from the Word of God, and then you give them a reason to come in and get you. You do that which is evil, you see. And you say, I'm not going to submit myself to this thing or whatever else, and this is, this is bad. And You need to trust God. Trust that the Lord will protect you. And just say, no, you have no authority over me. My boss at work says that I'm supposed to you know, do certain things that go against my religious convictions. 
I can't do that, sir. I'm sorry. But see the problem? You see, well, a lot of people did that, and they still had to do it, and they, they had problems with their bosses. Um, I wonder if some of the cases were because you weren't really living like a Christian. So when you come along and you try to give your rights as a Christian, your boss says, oh, you're a Christian? I didn't know that. But what if you were a really hard worker and really living as a Christian, as a real Christian should in accordance with the Scriptures? Very diligent, good man. Maybe the Lord would uh, or be a little bit more work on the heart of your boss or whatever else. Something to think about there. But uh, finally, let's go to Revelation chapter 12. Not a real detailed study today, brethren, but I just I need to answer a few things because I keep seeing this stuff. We'll get to it here in a minute. Um, Revelation chapter 12, verse 7 through 12. It says here, And there was war in heaven. Michael and his angels fought against the dragon, and the dragon fought in his angels, and prevailed not. Neither was their place found any more in heaven. And the great dragon was cast out, that old serpent called the, the devil and Satan, which deceiveth the whole world. He was cast out into the earth, and his angels were cast out with him. And I heard a loud voice saying in heaven, Now has come salvation and strength and the kingdom of our God and the power of his Christ. For the accuser of our brethren is cast down, which accused them before our God day and night. And they overcame him by the blood of the Lamb and by the word of their testimony, and they loved not their lives unto the death. Therefore rejoice ye heavens and ye that dwell in them. In them, Woe to the inhabitants of the earth and of the sea, for the devil has come down unto you, having great wrath, because he knoweth that he hath but a short time. There's a short time there. Unless, of course, you believe in the historicist position, which says that it all happened, Revelation all happened in the first century. So the devil's apparently on the earth right now, um, and he has a short time? Uh, no, no. Uh, you see, it doesn't work. Um, it's a future event. So that, you say, what does, that, what does that mean about Satan right now? He's in heaven. Oh, you know, I, I've, I'm just a good man and stuff. You know what? The, the big man upstairs, he takes care of me. Which one? <laughs> uh, because, you see, Satan's in heaven right now. A lot of these wicked people don't even realize what they're saying. You say, what? Well, did he just say that Satan's in heaven? Yes, I did. Because that's what the Bible says. Satan's not in hell. There's no throne down there with the devil sitting on it ruling. I like to say that occasionally just to kind of get through the Hollywood mind control that's out there messing people's heads up. The devil's down in hell and the flames. Are, that's not the devil. That's a Hollywood creation. You see, Hollywood wants you to think that there's this being called Satan and he's this, he rules the dark regions of the netherworld or something. And he's down there and he listen to the heavy metal, death metal. Do, 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 do. Yeah, you know, let's worship Lucifer. Yeah, you know, he's, he's down in hell. He's going to throw a party. And the devil's up there saying, I don't know what they're talking about. I'm not down in hell. And they're not really worshiping me. They're worshiping some Hollywood creation. The Lord says, hey, come here, devil. The devil says, yes, sir. I mean, read Job chapter 1 and Job chapter 2. The devil's appearing before the Lord and giving an answer what he's doing. Yes, sir. Um, what are you doing down there on the earth? Uh I've been walking around and just kind of seeing how things are going and seeing what the Christians are doing down there. I mean, you realize what the devil's job is, what we just read about there in Revelation chapter 12? He's the accuser of the brethren. He's checking up on you and me, watching us. A lot of the devil's servants do that too. Um, he's down here and he's watching. Say, so, uh, yeah, hey, that, uh, that one guy, Lord, the one child of yours down there, um, he was watching... Uh, Brian's sermons, but then look what he was looking at afterwards. That other sister right there, this this as one of your daughters there, Lord. Yeah, she was uh, following along in her Bible, and she got done, and she started to listen to that wicked music, my music, you know. Why would she listen to my music when she claims to be a Bible believer? Hmm. Oh, no, brother, no, no. The devil, he's down in hell and he's, he's got the heavy metal guys. They're doing his will and whatever else. No, they're worshiping something that's imaginary. Uh, that's not what the Bible teaches. You see, but Hollywood wants you to believe that that exists because then it's 
yin and yang. It's, it's good and evil. It's black and white. It's, it's these two opposing sides. And not just that there's a God in heaven that controls everything. A God that's so powerful that He can tell the second most powerful being in the universe, in creation, whatever you want to say, He can tell Him what to do. And uh, He doesn't even get kicked out until the future. Say, what are, you, what are you saying all this for? Because I see this thing in the comments all the time. The modern day state of Israel was created by the Rothschilds. And if you'd read the Balfour Declaration, if you just understood what was going on with those Jewish Freemasons, if you only knew, then you wouldn't say it's the fulfillment of Scripture. Because, you know, God can't use Satan to do his bidding. See, the, you know, it's the, it's the guy down there in hell on this throne, you know, he created Israel. He's sitting on his throne. He says, yes, my servants, create Israel. And they say, yes, Lord. And, and Jesus is up in heaven saying, oh, look at that. They're creating a fake Israel. What do I do now? <laughs> oh, no. You know, I mean, there's, there's actually false preachers out there that literally teach that the first seals, the seven seals, first part of the judgment in the time of Jacob's trouble, Revelation chapter uh, six talks about it. They actually teach that it's Jesus opening up the Bible and seeing what happens, but he doesn't actually cause it. That's why the church will be there for the first six seals or seven seals or something. Or I guess it's six and then the seventh one is when the church gets caught up or some foolish nonsense like that. And Jesus is up there just kind of opening up to see what's happening next. <gasps> you know, uh, no, it's actually the Lord causing it. Why? Because it's a judgment on the nation of Israel. That's why the book is called the book of Revelation, the revelation of Jesus Christ. I don't need to have Jesus revealed to me. Jews that reject Jesus, they need to have him revealed to them. That's what it's about. Okay. Uh, so, who created Israel? That would be God. Why? Because God had a servant one time that was called Nebuchadnezzar. The first head. The kingdom of gold. First new world order. And God says, my servant Nebuchadnezzar, you better submit yourself to him. You say, well then there's just blind submission. Did Daniel blindly submit to Nebuchadnezzar? No. How about Shadrach, Meshach, and Abednego? Did they submit blindly to Nebuchadnezzar? No, they didn't. And uh, I, th I think I recall that they were actually blessed of God's servant Nebuchadnezzar. Just like the Bible said would happen back there in the book of Jeremiah, chapter 27, that we read about earlier. You say, wait a second. Are you actually saying, Brian, that we could actually receive a blessing in the future as Christians? If we submit ourselves to the Word of God and do what the Bible says? Yeah, that's what I'm saying. That's exactly what I'm saying. What a thought. You know, it's funny because the fruit of the Spirit is, is listed in Galatians chapter 5. And it says, against such there is no law. Gentleness, faith, meekness, temperance, patience, fruit of the Spirit. Um, hmm. Maybe if we were doing those things, maybe if we were living right and righteously. You know, if the NSA was looking at your internet history and saying, wow, this is a Christian and not, I'm confused. <clears throat> one minute they're watching a sermon, one minute they're watching, listening to hymns, and the next they're looking at porn. And then the next they're listening to this, and they're looking at that and whatever else, a bunch of worldly lost stuff. Hmm. Maybe we would actually not be persecuted on the level of, you know, them just coming and going after us because we're doing evil, is what I'm saying. They can persecute you and you can take it patiently and whatever else and just show love towards them. Absolutely. Uh, that's there. But uh, I think a lot of the problems that the church has had down through the centuries were caused by the church being worldly and sinful. So, um, <clears throat> not going to make this a real long study. Just wanted to put that out there. Jeremiah chapter 27, verses 1 through 11. That's all you really need to get into. This, this whole thing of Israel is not really the the true Israel or no God if God would call Nebuchadnezzar his servant certainly 
God can bring in the nation of Israel, just like he said he would. Again, watch my study on why the Jews need to leave America. Um, God brought them back in unbelief. That's what the Bible says in the book of Ezekiel. God does not wait till they're saved and they receive Jesus as their Messiah and then they get brought back. <clears throat> no, that is not how it works. God brings them back in unbelief. God reveals, he catches the church up, says, okay, you're up, you're gone, away. John represents that. You see that happening. Book of Revelation, he's called up before the Antichrist is revealed. Again, there's, a, well, I think we could debate possibly that we'll be here to see the Antichrist. There's no debate. If we were going to be here to see the Antichrist, God wouldn't have called John up before the Antichrist is revealed. In Revelation 6, the 24 elders are up there. The angels round about the throne. In the resurrection, they neither marry nor are given in marriage, but are as the angels of God in heaven. I mean, it's just so clear, it's so obvious. But you get these Christians, they just start to mess around with the world, and then they get away from the Holy Spirit. The Holy Spirit starts, they grieve the Holy Spirit, and it's then they start to come up with their flesh, and their flesh is telling them things, and they're saying, it's the Holy Spirit. It's not the Holy Spirit. And they get all mixed up. It's just so simple. I still get these heretics coming along, and I'm, I try to be gentle at first, but they push my buttons, and then I get ticked off, and, you know, and I kick them, and I kick them hard. I'm not going to give them place by subjection. No, not for an hour. So, oh, the modern-day nation of Israel, it's, it's not of God. Okay, then why are all the other prophecies coming to pass, too, I might add? That's kind of odd. Oh, that's right, because the Illuminati, it's their, the Bible's their end times playbook, and they're fulfilling scripture or whatever else. Uh, well, even if that was true, doesn't God control the Illuminati? <laughs> uh, you think that they can do things and God doesn't know about it? All the Rothschilds, they have all this power. Uh, not more powerful than God. Um, <clears throat> well, the, the Jesuits, oh, the, the uh, Black Pope, the, um, the, the Bilderbergers, uh, the, did I say Illuminati? I think I did. The, the Freemasons, the, the, um, the World Economic Forum, Klaus Schwab, they can't take another breath without the Lord Jesus saying, okay, you can breathe. The Lord could take any one of them and just say, boom. Doesn't even have to snap his fingers. Just think a thought and they drop dead. God can do the same for Satan. Jesus is in the wilderness. He's up there. And the devil says to him, if you fall down and worship me, I'll give you the kingdoms. And the Lord says, Thou shalt not tempt the Lord thy God. Not tempting in the sense of people, modern, again, modern Christians mess that all up and they say, well, he was tempted, he was thinking about, oh, hmm, don't, please don't tempt me. It's not what he's saying. He's not, he's saying, don't push me, I'll destroy you right now. I am God. You want a scripture, you know? Where does Jesus ever claim to be God? Well, there's another good one. Thou shalt not tempt the Lord thy God. He's talking about himself. The Father's not there standing beside Jesus, you know, the two persons or something. Two of the three persons. Well, the two persons and a bird, I forgot. The Trinity, you know. Uh, <clears throat> no. Jesus Christ is there and he says, Thou shalt not tempt the Lord thy God. Talking about himself. Pilate, another one. You know, don't you know I have power to release you? And what does Jesus say? I'm going to paraphrase here a little bit, but you wouldn't have any power at all except it were given you from above. I gave you power. I have power to lay down my life and I can take it again. You can't do anything without me. What an amazing revelation will happen to all the atheists out there. I don't believe in God. I don't believe in God. But like saying that camera saying, I don't believe in the power cord going down to my little battery bank thing down here. I don't believe in the power cord. <laughs> And you take the camera and you say, look in the mirror here. And the camera goes, if a camera could speak, I didn't know that there was a power cord coming. So you're saying I don't have any power of myself? That's correct. Atheists, get up there and stand there. God, I didn't know. God says, yes, you did. I gave you life. I watched you all through your life. I watched you as a little boy, little girl. I saw you grow up. I saw you have bad experiences with organized religion. And instead of attacking organized religion like a Bible-believing Christian would do, you came after me. You came after my book. 
You mocked my book. You made it your purpose in life to tear down other people and destroy their faith in this book. And I sustained your miserable, worthless life the whole way through it. Now it's too late. Depart from me, ye cursed and everlasting fire prepared for the devil and his angels. Bye-bye. So that is going to be it. Thank you very much for watching, and we will see you in the next video.